Welcome to DOS Geek. We have a showdown here. If you're in the market for a computer that's not going to cost you a thousand or more dollars, you may consider going into the used market. Right here, I have two very popular and awesome options, the Dell XPS 13 here, 9350, and the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon fourth generation, both coming in around 2015, 2016 era, which means you can pick them up for quite a value out there in the used market on eBay or something similar to that. And because of these two brands, both Dell and Lenovo being known to support Linux, all of their, these systems here in my hand support Linux really well out of the box, even though these particular editions actually came with Windows installed on them. But of course, we nuked that really quick. But the question is, which one's the best value for your money? I've recently been spending a lot of time with this Dell XPS and really like it, but Noah from the Ask Noah Show has been talking nonstop about the ThinkPads and his love for them, so I got one of each and decided to do a little bit of a showdown to see in the used market which one is the best bang for your buck. Now, these are not exactly specs, so we're not going to do benchmarks here. We're going to be looking at build quality, keyboard, overall use of this device versus just looking at power because one has 16 gigabytes, one has eight, and they just have completely different screen sizes and resolution here. But certainly if you're in the market and you love having something that's versatile with the operating system you can put on it, you're probably looking at one of these two brands here. And so that's what we're gonna do. Now, one of the first things that I noticed about the ThinkPad is that it is made of a plasticky material here. Now, ThinkPads are well known, especially this X1 Carbon line, for being extremely durable devices. And I love the quality here, even with the logo, it's got a little red light LED there that will come on. So they definitely paid attention to, you know, the quality feel of this device, even with the plastic that is wrapped around. And generally, after having held MacBooks in the past in my hands and converting most of those to Linux as well, I prefer that unibody aluminum frame, but I had not given a laptop like this a shot in a long time with the plastic and the durability that they talk about with the X1 Carbon made me really interested, except you're gonna notice something right away. It's the fingerprints. And no, my hands are not greasy. In fact, they've been really soaking in alcohol swabs and cleaning cloths to get these clean for the video, both devices. So my hands were clean, yet you can see that every time I touch it, it leaves fingerprints all over the place. That has been my experience with this laptop and the plastic all from the beginning. It is just a fingerprint magnet. It's like taking your phone and suddenly seeing it in the sunlight and you see your finger smudges all over it. That's kind of what this material does. So while it may be fantastic for durability and flexibility, and it certainly makes this laptop very light, it doesn't do so well from a presentation standpoint. In fact, anytime I'm about to go anywhere, like the local uh, Linux user groups or anything, I have to try to swipe this thing down and then I guess my next step would be to just wear white gloves to use it. So I'm absolutely not a fan of the material that they build the Lenovo out of, or at least the coating that they put on top because it just seems to absolutely attract fingerprints. And the same thing goes for the inside. So while, the system here looks fantastic. You will see, maybe not in this light, but there are lots of fingerprints and smudges. Again, I just cleaned these off to do this video uh, that show up on the keys and also on this rest pad here anytime you lay your palms on it, which is unfortunate. You can see the hinge though on this device is actually really solid. When we give it the nice shake test here, it doesn't budge much at all. So it has a fantastic hinge that they've put in place for this device here, and it goes back quite a ways there so you could lay it flat. I have no idea why you'd want to do that because it's not touchscreen, but that is something that you can do with this device. The, the hinges are very well made, and the keyboard, of course, on the Lenovo is absolutely fantastic. So to talk about the plus side of this, even though I'm not a big fan of the material, when you look at this keyboard here, all of the keys are concave just slightly. They're perfectly spaced apart. You have a very big trackpad here um, to be able to maneuver around with. You also have right and left click in addition to the right and left click that's built into the pad down here. And of course you have your little red nub that Lenovo is known for. 
all the keys are solid and probably one of the best typing keyboards out there. So while I do not like the material that this device is made of, the keyboard on the other hand is a whole different ball game. Now, when you look at the bezel here on this device, the bezel isn't particularly huge, which is something that I also look for in a laptop, but it's also not particularly small. And you're gonna see a huge difference between this bezel and the XPS 13 here when I bring it up because it has a technology they're calling the infinity screen. And yes, if you've watched my other video on the XPS by itself, you'll know that I think that makes a huge difference. Now this isn't a MacBook, so of course you get lots of ports there. You get nice HDMI ports, you get USB ports, you have plenty of ports here to spare all the way around. And of course they have the freedom jack, you know, the headphone jack on there as well. There is no CD-ROM. And again, as I mentioned, holding this device, well, it's just a joy. It is super light. It's got the nice 14 inch screen. So the material that they chose from a light perspective and apparently from a durability standpoint is fantastic. It also has protective barrier between the keyboard and the components inside. So what this creates is anytime you spill water or something along those lines, you at least have a chance that this device is not going to get ruined from that. It also comes with a nice fingerprint scanner in there. And otherwise, it is a pretty awesome little laptop. And if you end up owning one, you're certainly not going to be disappointed, although you may want to wear gloves anytime you're touching it. Next up, we have the Dell XPS 9350. This is, of course, the aluminum unibody design. Now, this can get some smudges on it, too, but they're so easy to wipe away. And you can see it just looks like it's brand new. Like I literally took it out of the box here to do this video. And that's what's quite amazing from this. The build quality, the sheer amount of ports and everything you get, very similar to the ThinkPad in that way. The other thing that I love about this device is that it has a power meter over on the side here. So I can check what level my battery is by simply pressing that button and LEDs will light up and tell me where I'm at. The nice thing about the Dell XPS is you feel that premium quality all the way around, including just this little flap here. If you wanna get more information on the Dell, you simply lip up, lift up this flap and it magnetically closes. It's little touches like that to me that make a difference between feeling like I have a premium laptop in my hand and maybe something I just picked up off of the shelf at a Best Buy or Walmart, you know, for a cheap bargain. This to me feels like a $900 laptop that I got used for four or 500 bucks. Whereas the ThinkPad at times, especially when you're looking at it uh, and how it's worn down compared to the Dell XPS in the years that it's been used, this certainly holds true to looking like something that I just bought yesterday Whereas the ThinkPad, if you take a look at it, looks like it's used. It looks like it's three to four years old. And I certainly think that speaks to the quality of having something like an aluminum unishell here in which you're just going to have that premium look that really doesn't age. Now, when we talk about the hinge here, you can see this hinge doesn't move as well. Any position I put it in, it also doesn't lay back anywhere near as far. That's as far as it tilts, so it doesn't lay completely flat like the Lenovo ThinkPad. Of course, again, I don't know why you would want to, but if that's something that you need for some reason I can't think of, great. The other thing I'll notice that's a little quirk on this Dell XPS is because of this tiny, tiny bezel, which just absolutely makes a difference in your engagement and entertainment and videos by not having a bezel around it. That infinity screen is more than just kind of a you know marketing Ploy, it is actually something that makes a difference in your viewing experience. You feel more captivated into the content there uh, by having that infinity screen. That's just my experience. Now, the keyboard is a chiclet keyboard, kind of like what you would see on a typical Mac. It is nowhere near as nice to type on as the Lenovo ThinkPad, but it's by far not a terrible experience. It's a fantastic keyboard all in all, but it doesn't have the curvature or the quality that the ThinkPad X1 Carbon has. It does have a much bigger mouse pad area here, not much bigger, but you know, a, a bigger mouse pad area here for you to uh, do your gesturing and left and right click, but you don't have the extra buttons like you have on a Lenovo, and you certainly don't have the nub there. As far as screen quality goes between these two laptops, 
I think the Dell has slightly brighter colors than the 14 inch Lenovo X1. But then again, this is a smaller screen, so it's just going to have better pixel density and it could be very well about the exact same quality. And it would be hard to tell the difference because this one shrunk down diagonally by an inch. So overall, I'm not going to rate those too much differently. Both have backlit keyboards, which is a must for me in any laptop that I own. So both of them win in that category. Now, if we switch to actually looking at the launch pages for these two laptops back in the day, here is the ThinkPad X1 Carbon 4th Gen. And you can see they're saying it's ultra thin, ultra light, ultra tough, which I absolutely agree with those things and ultra fingerprint grabby as well. Is that is that a thing? Is that what we're gonna call it? Extra fingerprint grabby? Well, that's what we're going with here. Um, they're saying it's far above average. It features a carbon fiber reinforced chassis and passes durability tests in extreme environments. You can also see that on their own site, it was rated about a 3.6 stars. I wonder how many comments of those have to do with the fact of the fingerprints there. Um, so it's military tested to the specifications there. So if that's something that you're interested in, that may give you an advantage towards the ThinkPad uh, over the Dell XPS. Um, they talk about its powerful performance, of course, stunning display, which it had multiple options from 1920 by 1080 or 2560 by 1440 or the 2K option there. Um, they talk about the extra security, of course, because this has the touch sensor, tent, touch sensor and fingerprint reader there for you uh, if that's something that you're interested in. And we can read some of the comments here. Lightweight, no nonsense, light and fast. So they obviously start with all of their good reviews here. Maybe we'll sort this lowest to highest and just see what we have. Uh, crap, crack coming up halfway on the lid. Um, that was for a yoga, it looks like. Uh, laptop, simplest task has severe strain. Now, I've not noticed that in this laptop at all. But then again, I run Linux and not crap Win Windows. So... Um, I think both of them are extremely fast and snappy, although completely different specs. Uh, the Lenovo X1 Carbon that I have also has 16 gigabytes of RAM in it, which is awesome. Um, both of them are not super upgradable um, devices. They are certainly, though, easy to get into and replace things that generally go bad. Uh, for instance, you certainly could replace the NVMe drives in either of these devices because I've opened them up and getting to the battery is very easy. Upgradability, though, when it comes to RAM is not so great because a lot of the RAM is actually soldered on. Um, I haven't checked underneath everything, and I'll show you a picture of inside the Lenovo because I just didn't want to take it all apart. But I'll see if I can find out whether the RAM is actually upgradable on this device. Here's the XPS 13 laptop in its original launch page. Again, no, not a round anymore where you could buy it brand new, but this is where you could get it used. Um, they talk about, uh, okay, innovation that inspires you. It did win a bunch of awards when this one came out. Smallest 13 inch on the planet with the world's first infinity edge display, which makes a huge difference. Of course, you have options in the resolution here. Again, easy to share content, 400 nit brightness, uh, gorgeous colors. Both of them have pretty good colors and I'll show you video so you can see the difference in some of the colors with video on there but again keep in mind 13 inch versus 14 inch the battery life here is a ridiculous claim maybe when it was brand new but i can tell you in this case both batteries generally run between four to six hours at best now most of them obviously don't have the full life capacity of when they're brand new they're now a couple years old and so that's the batteries are starting to degrade in them but i highly doubt that they've degraded to the point when i look at the battery life that's left that uh, suddenly if I put a new battery in them, they would be getting anywhere near these 18 hours. They're, they're both, you know, maybe if only you had a text document open at the lowest brightness settings for your monitor, that would happen. So when we talk about ports and slots, you have the SD card slot, the USB 3.0 with power share, the Noble Lock slot, AC power, Thunderbolt 3, supporting power and charging power share, Thunderbolt 3, bi-directional USB 3.1, VGA, HDMI, Ethernet, and USB-A via Dell adapter. Got a little Apple dongle gate going there. USB 3.0 headset jack and battery gauge button and indicator, which I showed, and your dimensions and your weight here. 
So for the ThinkPad, you have the Y gig, the One Link Plus, the Mini Display Port, the HDMI, three times USB 3.0, and a micro SD card there as far as your ports go. So again, depending on if you have a specific need for one of those style of ports, say maybe you have to have that Thunderbolt here that isn't on the ThinkPad, but is on the Dell. So if that's a consideration, then you may want to go with the Dell in that case. So overall, here's my conclusion. I think both of them are fantastic laptops and both do a great job of supporting Linux out of the box. Both of these laptops have had Arch on them as well as OpenSUSE and Fedora, and they scream through it without any issues, including not having to worry about any issues with Wi-Fi compatibility or anything else. So they utilize very standardized equipment that's easy for any operating system to support. I think they both have fantastic build quality, although the Dell certainly feels and looks superior and is going to give you, you know, a much more modern look, even having an older laptop than you're going to get with the ThinkPad. But if you don't care about how it looks and you're just going to stick a sticker over it anyways, you're going to have a much better experience with the ThinkPad's keyboard and typing on it as a fantastically bright keyboard. And obviously, based on some of the information we read, it has a lot of durability between it. And that is something that I've heard from other users who have ThinkPads, that they just love the durability, military spec grade durability, you know, um, be able to handle dust and shock and things like that without breaking. So if you're going to be out and about and, you know, tossing this into your car and being a little rough with it, then maybe that Lenovo is the way to go. It will look like it took a beating probably but it'll keep taking that beating and that's a good thing. So hopefully this video has helped you some um, make a decision if you are looking at getting either a Dell or a ThinkPad out there. Again, my personal choice for the winner, but it was a really close call, just goes to the Dell with the slight edge just because of that aluminum unibody frame, which I think is just absolutely gorgeous. Let me know in the comments below what you think. What is your favorite laptop around this era or maybe even older that you think beats out these ones? Uh, in that same price range. I would love to know your thoughts and experiences that you've had. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to watch the video.